Hello, this is Roy Tom Molina with BMX. During this short video, I'll show you how to do an automatic calibration of a heart temperature transmitter. I've just received a work order for a temperature loop calibration. Let's see the process. We want to load our MC6 calibrator, so we start up with CMX, our calibration software. We find the loop. We're gonna send this loop over. So we simply drag the calibrator across and hit send, and you'll notice it pops up right away on the calibrator. We're ready to go. At this point, we just disconnect the USB cable, take the calibrator out into the field, and perform our calibration. To start the calibration, we select Documenting Calibrator. We already have a test here that we've loaded from CMX calibration software previously. As a technician, this is my starting point, so I'll, I'll select the test itself and this tells me all the parameters it tells me where to hook up I take my temperature transmitter I'm holding on to the output section and the output here is on the bottom so that tells me to hook up right here and this is where I'll measure current and where it will also provide loop power so this is my input side where does the input go well that goes right here which is right here now, if I did have a three or four wire RTD setup, I would simply stack the leads. So if I had two black leads, I'd stack those two and two red, you stack those. So the test is a five up. Our input is zero to 100 degrees C and our output is four to 20 milliamps. And it shows that we're providing loop power. So the next step then is to press the check mark. So before we start the actual test, let me explain what's going on with the screen. On the top left, we have our input. Now this is an RTD temperature transmitter. We're using the calibrator to simulate the temperature. We could use a temperature bath if we had a temperature element as well, but the calibrator can simulate that. And to simulate RTD, we use resistance. The top right is our measurement. So we're seeing four milliamps right now. We have a graph here and the midline is our zero. The blue dotted lines above and below represent our tolerance. So we can be off of that zero up to the blue lines above and to the blue lines below and still be passing. You'll see a live reading here of the error the right above the graph on the top right. And we have a back button to start. So let's press start. The bottom right gives you an indication of where we're going. It tells you what we're looking at for the next test point and what the expected output is for current. So we've got the first test point set. We're on the second one now, and I've got an eight second delay on each test point just to allow for settling. Maybe you have a longer damping section inside the transmitter that, uh, that takes a while to ramp up or down. So that's what the delay is for. And right now we're on our final 100 degree test point. And you can see that our final two points have turned red, which means they're beyond our passing section. They're past the blue lines, which means it actually fails. And it is obvious whether or not it passes or fails. Now that we've reached the end of our test, we can see our full error down at the bottom, negative 0.724%. Our original tolerance was half a percent. That's represented by those blue lines. Now before we save it, let's look at our different options here. I can hit down arrow and I can pick who did the calibration, so I'll select myself, and I could put in any calibration notes. Hit down again, this shows us our graph, and we can see that it was actually passing for the first three test points, and the final two we went down below in a negative direction. Maybe you wanted to find out exactly what the error was at each test point. That's given to you here in the final page. If I hit down again, it simply wraps back around so you can review at your leisure. Now, let me hit save here. We have an option to, to do a save as found, and that's what I want. So I'll go ahead and press the check mark. Now, we've captured our as found results, and we know that it's failed. So as calibration technicians, we know that we need to make an adjustment and then do an as left test. So to do an adjustment, we need a communicator to talk to this heart device. Well, here's the secret, the top left hand button. There's an option here to start communicator. 
By selecting that, it is now firing up the heart communicator to speak with the transmitter. From there, we'll have access to the different trimming functions. Here, we found it. And in this device, we want device setup. And every manufacturer will be a little bit different. But with this manufacturer, it's under Diag service. And we have a D to A to trim and a sensor trim. The sensor trim is simply the A to D trim, so we need to do both of them to do a proper calibration. We'll start off by doing a sensor trim. And I want a two-point trim. We'll do these lower and the upper. In this case, the communicator portion is right up here. So whatever would appear on your communicator shows up here. It's saying apply low input value. The bottom two windows are from the calibrator itself. So we're getting a little bit more extra information from what's sourced and what's measured live. So apply low input value, which is zero degrees C. So that's good. I'll hit the check mark. Press OK when it's stable. Well, it is stable. Enter applied value. Now it's zero here, zero, but I'll, I'll just show you as a shortcut, we'll hit the number one, which copies the value from here and pastes it up into here, a check mark to send it. Now we apply our high input value. Just punch in 100. You can see the output ramp up on, on the right side. So press OK when it's stable. I'm just waiting for it to stabilize. All right, we're good. And now it wants to know what value we just sent over. So we want to tell it we just put over 100 point triple zero. So I'll hit the number one here, which copies this value and a check mark to send it over. Two point trim, OK. And the red wording up across the top tells us that the transmitter is still performing a function. It's finishing up. Now we've just completed our sensor trim. So the next thing is to go up, and now we need our D to A trim. A warning loop should be removed from automatic control. In this case, we're not connected to a process. Connect reference meter, that's already done. We're able to see that right on the screen. Now it's setting the field device output to four milliamps, good. So in this case, the transmitter is being told to output four milliamps. And what we're doing is we're measuring it to see if it's really doing it. This is the reality check. So what we're saying is it thinks it's putting out four, but no, it's really putting out 4.00534. So let me hit number two. That copies the value from window two and a check mark to send it over. Now it's saying, does the field device output four milliamps Re equal what we see here and yes. Now it's time for the 20 milliamps. The transmitter is being told to output 20 milliamps and we'll wait for this to stabilize. But is it 20? No, it's not. It's 19.852. It's pretty close, but we can ac accurately measure out to the microamp. So we're going to tell it, no, you're actually outputting 19.8526. And now it will self adjust based on that. This is all part of the calibration process. Does it match up? Yes. So we'll hit check. The loop can be returned to automatic control. So we are done. At this point, we simply hit the X to exit out of communicator mode and finish up with our as left. And now that we've finished doing our trim, we can do our as left test. To start that, we simply hit the start button. The same series of events will occur. We'll start off with our zero point, and you can see our countdown. We have a 10 second timer in between each step. And on the bottom right, it shows us what test point that is heading to next. And just remember that at any time, you can see the live error reading right above the graph. So it's quite a bit flatter than our previous.
So as a calibration technician, I've done my duty in performing an as found. I saw a failure. I've went in and I've trimmed that error out and had done an as left. So I've left it in a passing condition. And before we had the red failed and now we have a green passed. It's obvious whether it passes or fails. And it's, we can see our error. Now we have only a 0.063% of span error. And if I go down, I can add in notes here. I can see the visually what the graph looked like and the finally I can see all my raw data. Let's save this. And in this case, as left is selected, we want to save this as left. I'll hit my check mark. And now I am complete. We've successfully done an as found, a trim, and a passing as left test result. Now that we've captured our test results, the next step is to unload them into our CMX software to complete the process of electronic paperless calibration. We'll click on calibration, receive, and connect. So we're now finding out, we're looking at the calibrator to see what's there. I've got my position. I selected it, now I'll receive it. You notice how fast it is because this is USB. It's come over okay, and let me close that. Here's our test result. We have our test result that contains all of our critical information as far as when it occurred, who did it, what the standard was, but we can also perform a calibration certificate. So here's our calibration certificate as well for easy viewing. And that's how you do an automatic paperless calibration of a temperature transmitter with a BMEX MC6. Thank you for watching and look for more of our calibration videos.